Okay guys, so now we have finally gotten to this point where we can start painting these little guys. Um, so yeah, this is the most fun part. Um, but <laughs> like I mentioned in part one, I am really not very good at painting. Um, or I don't know a lot. Um, everything I know is kind of stuff that I figured out for myself. Um, so a lot of you have asked me to give you like in-depth tips and tricks on what I do. Um, but to be really 100% honest, I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> to be honest. Um, yeah, I really don't know anything about painting. Um, I have a couple of things that I do know that I can remember from art class or like pottery classes that I did when I was like eight years old or something. So how I approach everything is literally like... I start off with the basics and then I kind of just wing it after that. Um, so yeah, that that is my method. <laughs> um, so I will try my best to give you the best uh, basic skills or the basic advice that I'm going to do specifically on these ones. Um, so yeah, so to start off, I'm going to paint all of them black. Um, the reason why you do that or you paint your items a very dark base color is because you always start off with the darkest color at the at the bottom and you kind of work your way up getting making the paint lighter and lighter as you go um so yeah you you basically you end up with doing the highlights at the last stage um, and yeah, making them black rather than going in and painting them blue or whatever color they're going to be. If you make them black or really, really dark color, um, it just gives your item a lot more definition and it's not something that you can paint in afterwards. Um, so if you start off light, that is what it's going to be. And if you're going to add like darker colors on top of that, it's going to look really weird. Um, so yeah, the easiest is always to start off with your darkest color first and then work your way up. Uh, for items that have dark spots, you can add that afterwards when you're doing your highlight layer. So that is basically like a highlight, low light type layer. So if I take this one, for example, from part one, if you guys can remember, I painted this a very dark purple color. Um, the reason why I chose a dark purple is because it does have a purpley feel um, and I was a bit scared that if I'm going to paint it just black, it's going to be too black. So if you have lighter objects like this, feel free to play around with maybe doing like a dark of the color that it's going to be. Um, so if it's going to be blue, you can always make it like a blue black color or a red black color. Um, so it's all, all up to you. Um, in general, I always paint everything black. Um, it was just with that one that I actually added extra paint um, into it. And then for these ones, I'm going to make them obviously black <laughs> and then start off with making them lighter. So how I do that is I have these little sponges. So this one was actually double the thickness of what it is now. Um, and these are the little sponges that you get in pull holders. Uh, so I just cut it in half and then I cut it into quarters. So these little sponges, I can throw them away um, when I'm done because, yeah, they, they, you can't wash them properly. Um, so what makes them great is that they are very small and you just basically blot it everywhere and you can see how the paint goes. Um, and again, sometimes you're going to do the whole uh, surface you're going to do the same color sometimes you maybe just do blotches so for this one for example if you take that one um i'm most probably gonna do blotched paint um so i'm not gonna make it like an equal uh like an off-white color whereas this one i'm definitely going to do an off-white color and then finish it off with a black wash afterwards so that all those cracks can show up so that's a big difference between those two um and yeah like i said guys i just wing it as i go 
Um, and yeah, you will see more or less in the time lapse of each one um, how I paint these um, and kind of like the steps that I took to get to the end result. But in the end, guys, I mean, all of our stuff is going to be different and that's what makes DIY and being creative so cool is because we can all do the same thing but it's all going to be different um, and yeah don't be scared to um, experiment um, if it doesn't work out or if it looks horrible you can just paint over it again um, and start from scratch um, it's really not the end of the world and in the end you have to enjoy what you're doing that is the most important part so enough of my babble i am now going to start painting these guys and yeah
sorry guys i'm just going to stop the video there quickly to show you how i did these green spots so if you check on the image it's got like these little green spots everywhere um so i was super unsure how i was gonna do that um because yeah i had no idea but i found a way that i can easily do it and it looks pretty cool um so i just want to show you guys so basically i just take green um that i've mixed and if you can see there i just make a dot and especially the bigger ones try to put a bit more paint on the inside and then all i do is i take a sponge and basically just pat it out so that it kind of looks like it's faded in a way um so yeah i just wanted to show you guys that
Wow, guys, I am finally finished with all of them. Um, this project has been massive. It has been... Ugh, I am so, so, so tired. <laughs> um, I have never been this tired after a project before. Um, yeah, I am really, really happy with how it came out. It has been a lot of fun, even though there's been so many hiccups and so many delays with this video. Um, but yeah, I am super, super excited to share them with you. Um, and I'm so glad that they're finished. Um, and yeah, I am also very excited to share the display with you. The display is looking super awesome and I will be sharing that with you in next week's video. Um, so yeah, let's look at all the eggs up close. So let's start off with the first one from part one. Um, so this is the Swedish short snapped. Um, and yeah, I still love this one. It looks exactly the same as it did in part one. Um, but yeah, I love the purple. I love the bit of blue in there. Um, and yeah, I love how, how this one turned out. Then the next one is this one and it's called the Peruvian Viper Tooth. Um, I absolutely love this one because it is very tiny. It's the tiniest one in the bunch. Um, and yeah. Then the third one is the Romanian Longhorn. Um, and I did this one in part one. And like you guys can remember, I wasn't really happy with how it turned out. Um, so yeah, I just repainted it. I redid everything. Um, and I am really happy with how it looks now. It looks a lot better than the first one. Um, so that's that one. So next we can start with the new ones. So this one is the Hungarian Horntail. Um, I absolutely love how this one turned out. This one was the one that um, had very deep lumps and bumps like you can see there. Um, and yeah, I love how this one turned out. It does look a lot like stone, which I'm really, really happy with. Um, because yeah, I think it just gives it a really cool dragon egg type feel. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love, I love this one. And the next one is the Ukrainian Iron Belly. Um, I love how this one turned out. It does have a bit of an issue here, like you can see. <laughs> the, the, the design doesn't really come together that well. <laughs> but it's fine. Um, yeah, this is a very difficult to design to do. And I think if you don't do this or do the planning on like a computer, um, or like really intense technical drawings, it's not going to work out. But I don't think it matters that much because it's just the one side that it doesn't really go together that well. Um, so I'm just going to display it from, from a side that actually works well. Um, and then like you can see, I did all the spires at the top. I did a dark blue color, which I think really looks very, very cool. Um, and yeah, that's that one. Then the next one is called an Antipodian Opali, uh, which I'm not really sure what the dragon looks like, to be honest. I will have to Google that. Um, but this is the one with the cracks in it. So that's how it turned out. Um, I have to say that this side, the cracks looks really good, but on the other side, you don't really see it that well. Um, so yeah, I think if I do anything with cracks again, I think I will maybe use the silicone nibs to make this a bit uh, wider. Um, because yeah, um, I love this side, but this side is a bit sad. Um, so again, I'll just display it from, from one side. Then the next one is called a Hebridean Black. Again, I have no idea what this dragon looks like, so <laughs> I will have to go and look that up as well. Um, and yeah, I absolutely love how this one turned out, especially with the fur type feel. Um, yeah, I, I am really happy with it. Just a mental note on these toppers. Uh, when you do anything with a Sculpey or polymer clay that is fine like this, that doesn't have an inner support. Um, like I mentioned earlier on, um, I actually thought that I was going to put wire um, on the inside of these. But the problem was the wire was thin enough. But 
I had to make the clay very, very thin around the wire and that doesn't really work. So if you're going to use wire, you are going to have to put quite a bit of um, clay around it um, because yeah, the, the clay just didn't want to stick to the wire. So I ended up doing it only with polymer clay, which is fine when you bake it flat. But what happened with this one was I put everything on the top like I showed you guys and then when I baked it I baked it in the oven lying down um, and what happened then was if you can see there they all kind of flopped to the back because everything is very very bendy when um, polymer gets uh, hot so when you take anything out of the oven as well it is still very bendable um, so that kind of happened, which is not a train smash because I am going to display it from one side. Um, but just as a mental note, so that you don't kind of put a lot of work into something that you want to display 3D and it kind of ends up being like that. Um, so yeah, that's just a side note. But other than that, I am really happy with how it turned out. I can show you guys up close what it looks like. Um, and yeah, again, I just painted this purple, this green, and then I went over it with a black wash um, and just patted it dry um, so that it's not like too dark. Um, because yeah, you can, if you do washes, you can just rub the wash away and it just makes it look a bit lighter. Um, so yeah, that's all I did there. You can see that. So that's that one. Then the next one is the Chinese fireball. So like you guys can remember, this one was supposed to go to my bathroom, but I have a really awesome display idea and I need all the eggs. Um, so this one is going to the main display and I will most probably be redoing this one and maybe making it a bit bigger for my bathroom. Um, so yeah, if you are, guys want to see an in-depth video of this one, um, then let me know, then I can put a video of that on, on, on here. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I love the gold. Um, I, I wasn't sure how much gold I was going to put in, but yeah, ju it just being red was a bit boring. So I thought maybe just put in a bunch of gold um, and red and gold always looks good together. So that's that one. Then the next one is the Norwegian Ridgeback. Um, and yeah, very plain egg, just basic black. Um, I kind of put spots in there, like you can see darker spots. Um, and yeah, it's a very basic one. And the next one, um, and strangely enough, this is my favorite one. <laughs> um, this is the common Welsh green. Um, and yeah, I had the most reservations about painting this one because getting all these colors and spots and everything in here is, yeah, it was a very daunting task for me. Um, but it was a lot of fun um, and yeah, I absolutely love how this one turned out. It looks really, really cool um, and yeah, I'm pretty, pretty happy with, with this one. So yeah, guys, that's all the eggs. I hope you have enjoyed these super long videos. I do apologize for it being so, so long. I really didn't think it was going to take me this long <laughs> to complete. Um, so in future, I will try my best to not be as ambitious and rather do these in segments so that the videos are a bit shorter, but also have a bit more info. Um, and yeah, guys, let me know what you think. I really do appreciate when you guys ask me for sp specific things like painting techniques or anything like that. It just gives me an idea of what type of videos that you guys want. Um, so yeah, guys, thanks for sticking around. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for all your really nice messages of understanding of me not posting on time. Um, I am going to try my best to for this to be the last time that this happens. 
Um, but yeah, thanks again, guys, for being so understanding. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you guys think that it was all worth it. <laughs> for me personally, it was very, very worth it. And I'm super excited about displaying these. And yeah, tune in next Sunday for the display. I will have a free downloadable file available for you guys to do the exact same project. Um, so obviously you're going to have to follow these videos for the painting and the building, but for the display video, um, I will have the full display plan and everything that you need printing wise and design wise <laughs> will be on that file that you guys can download for free. Um, so yeah, tune in for that. And yeah, guys, thanks again for being so understanding. You guys are awesome. And yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing week and I'll see you again next week for an all new video. Cheers, guys.